Good evening for Enterprise fans and welcome to the finals, the last match of the Evelyn Elixir League. Uh, we're seeing our wonderful runners uh, Peasants OMFG and Nightdew on one side, and the other race is Blue Bear and NG Dave on the other. Uh, my name is Garen, being joined on the restream tonight by uh, Hush Pyramid, our restreamer, uh, Beauty and Discovery and Fiery Blizzard, our trackers, and Xenocad with me in the comms booth. How are you doing, Zeno? I am doing well. I'm very excited for this uh, hype race. These are two of our two of our best teams to get here. They had to have some of the best records going through our entire eight weeks of uh, regular season uh, with a pool of 24 different teams. Uh, then their teams raced two other teams, uh, the Rusty Spoons and Nue Moon, in the semifinals last week. Uh, Peasants and Wu Bear, representing Team Wombat Milk, uh, <clears throat> defeated uh, the Rusty Spoons last week, and Might Do and Engadave on Bold Strategy uh, defeated Nue Moon uh, to make it to this match. There was another race earlier today between two other members of the team to give to uh, set things up on our other flag set potion party. And so this race is the decider. Uh, I won't spoil that race. Go, but you can go back and watch it. But I will say that uh, Team Wombat Milk does have a one-game advantage going into this twin cast. So Bold Strategy needs to win out to win the tournament, whereas uh, Team Wombat Milk on the left side uh, only needs to win one of their two races. But we do have an edge hero. What do you make of that, Guerin? I think it's time for some darts. Yeah, and... I am... Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. All right. Um, I like Edge as a hero. I mean, um, he's pretty fast and, you know, not too much so, but uh, gives me a lot of chances to dart weapons and, you know... We do have curse rings available, so it's usually not too bad to match his agility. And yeah, he's a very nice all-around character to have for these. I found. Yeah, uh, Edge Hero kind of can mean that you just don't care about agility because Edge just outspeeds everything. Uh, well, everything except potentially that uh, White Spear and Murasame altars that we'll have to conquer uh, for objective six and seven. Uh, but it does look like our runners are now off. Uh, our other random objective is the Tower of Sot. As usual, for this flag set, we have our for the Bull Gauntlet, Defeat, Gold Bez, Complete Cave Magnus, Forge, Legend Sword. We have to do six of those. Here's Rosa, and we get a Sparkle, giving us the Tower Key. And it looks like we are off. All right, so Edge has uh, a different uh, dating interest tonight. Usually likes Rydia, but uh, we're going to summon Rosa tonight. Nice little wait to start off with. I mean, so one of our uh, characters had to come from Baron, you know. Rosa, Rosa actually lives here. Uh, Rydia doesn't. Yeah, but Rydia's kind of an orphan, you know, that whole burning down the village thing, which might yeah. see her tonight. Well, well, we haven't burned down the village yet. So, we'll, we'll see. Uh, looks like our runners are scattering a little bit. Uh, Night 2 headed right to that village of Mist. Uh, Wu Bear heading to Mist Cave. Peasants headed straight to Damskin and Engadev rooting out the watery pass. And we see Bygan is hiding out in the cave, so that's a nice rude boss to not see the rest of the scene. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bygan can be very punchy at some later spots, so it's very nice to see that we won't have to deal with him. Uh, Start, no. Starting with the Bacchus line early on in the uh, watery pass. Ooh, that is very nice. Uh, the watery pass is a very popular loot location on our weighted flag sets because it is a little bit out of the way, so the loot tends to skew a little bit towards the higher end. That being said, we do have max tier 5 on, so there's only so much that waiting will help, which might be motivating uh, peasants's, uh, Peasant's loot of Damsian Castle, which has a very dense uh, grouping of checks. Yep, uh, there was also a rune ring in that watery pass front end too. Yeah, I mean, we we started with 10 of those, so that's just extra money, but uh, you don't hate to see it. It's still 10,000 gold. Cat Claw as well, also Siren. And we did see that Fusoya is in the Kaipo bed. That is very good news for our runners, uh, if they are able to find a Sand Ruby.
Uh, and um, meanwhile, we've got uh, peasants going over to check the Mount Hobbs character. Yep, uh, Peasant's going to give us our first look at this Mount Hobbs character. It's probably the easiest character to actually obtain in the randomizer, since we do have our three characters turned off. Uh, our other runners continuing through their initial looting and shopping. Rubear also hitting up the watery pass to sort of neutralize Engidave's advantage on the loot there. Night 2 doing some shopping in Troya, and oh dear, that's an Edward and a Kainazo. Uh, I think Not right now. <laughs> Uh, we may we may never come back to that ever. If there's a spoon early, maybe, but yeah, that's not appealing. And uh, we be. also. Oh no! Go ahead. We, we had seen in uh, Troya that it's the camping uh, headquarters, tents, and cabins in the same shop. Oh, that is very nice to have. Um, Edward is a very rough proposition. I mean, he it is Edge hero, so Edward it can at least keep up with Edge mostly. But uh, his uh, weaponry it, it, situation is rough. He doesn't have a lot of hit points. And uh, probably most importantly, uh, Edge doesn't need a whole lot of levels to get through the overworld. And the other real big reason to do this spot is to get experience. And oh boy, uh, that's a Demist. Do you want to explain uh, what the significance of Demist is on Peasant's side? Sure. Well, uh, in this flag set, uh, we don't give you a free item with uh, Bad Word over in Troya because that's just too easy. So uh, you get the key item when you kill the Demis and kill Rydia's mom. Sorry, Rydia. Uh, and it's in here in a very early spot that most learners are probably going to check. So it's uh, double check. Yeah. Uh, and Miss Dragon this just hanging out at the bottom of the Antlion Cave, which, now that I think about it, looks a lot like the Mist Cave. I think it just got confused about which cave it was supposed to be guarding. And there's underground access. We have the yeah, Magma Key tonight. We get the Magma Key. That is definitely our runner's preferred underground access. Uh, a hook uh, might be nice under certain circumstances, but most runners are not looking... Uh, to do a hook route to get underground, and with no hook objective, hook related objectives, we are quite happy to see a magma key early on. Yeah, the only way they're going to do the hook dive at this point is if one of the two bosses, or both of them, happen to be down that way. Oh, yeah. We do... Uh, yeah, there could be a Golbez or a Gauntlet down there. Um, the underground does give us more boss peaking options, but... We expect our runners, uh, we might see an early trip to the underground from peasants. Uh, we do have some free, free key items, but of course, first we're going to stop by Mist Village to, to check on what Rydia's mom is holding. And tonight it looks like Rydia's mom was guarding the adamant. So that's a nice little find there. Yeah, it uh, turn, turns out... Uh, this random village of summoners was just holding on to this super rare mineral. Uh, don't know how that happened. I do want to quickly shout out, Engidave bought a stack of 10 shurikens, and those have been just tearing through this overworld uh, for him. Uh, I believe that Kainaza went down and just over, like, just barely survived a dart. Uh, Demist went down just to one dart, which definitely sped that fight up for him. Yeah, in the early game, they're nice to have. I mean, in the later game, you're not going to dart a shuriken. It's yeah. too weak, but early game, it's like, that's great. Yeah, it's just been speeding up some of these very early checks. And uh, I do just I just, just want to shout out that strategy, because that's something that we're not seeing a lot of the other, other runners in play. I wouldn't have thought of it either, to be honest. Oh, absolutely no. I would. I don't think I would have uh, thought to pick that. Usually, I mean, I expect to pick up like vampires, potentially, on the overworld, but... And we did see him for sale. Yeah. Uh, Dave now picking up the adamant uh, peasants, checking in on the Mist Cave boss, because we do, again, have, still have the hunts for the Kabul Gauntlet and Golbez. I know someone checked the waterfall. I don't remember who it was, though, up in the waterfall, but I don't think it was one of the two we had to do. Yeah, I missed what that boss was. I do think that peasants checked it, probably, on his way through Damsian. I'm not sure that uh, our other runners have. Uh, Beauty and Discovery of Tracker letting us know that uh, the Waterfall did have Odin, uh, which is another sort of nice boss to see out of the way. Odin can be nasty at certain locations, but it's also very, very weak to Thunder, and we have an edge. And if those King of Bass, that Thunder is going to be really bad. 
Yeah. Uh, see, it looks like Pez is now starting to go underground. Uh, yep. Gonna dive early to probably check out the Fey March freebie. Yep, we want to check the freebies, and oh boy, our duplicate character is Edward. That's another Edward at Baron Inn. And hey, look, it's Valvalis at Baron Inn 1. Uh, at least it's at Baron Inn 1, not 2. Yeah, yeah, Valvalis at Baron 2 can be rough, but she's very slow and doesn't have magic defense. Uh, Val at Baron Inn 1 would be really bad if we didn't have the Dark Command. Well, this is free for Baron Inn 2. We have the King and Queen of Evelyn, who... Are really not a threat anywhere they show up. And... No, they're just gonna hang out, uh, talk a bit, uh, maybe not even get to talk because we're going to destroy them before the King of Eblin before he even gets to give his speech. Uh, sorry, King Eblin, uh, we don't have time. Uh, Ed Edge doesn't want to talk to his parents uh, percent today, apparently. Yeah, well, you know, Edge has got business today. Yeah, we, we don't have time to talk to our parents. Sorry. Uh, we're busy. You really want to talk to your parents? They've been turned into monsters. Yeah, I, I, I guess I can see uh, where Dave is coming from. Uh, no, to answer to the chat, there's no soft lock if you. Uh, no, the it, they are just very, very slow. Queen Eblin would eventually take a turn and leave, but they are very slow. And it turns out uh, that uh, even though. Uh, Edward was actually just uh, Edge's parents in dis disguise. Uh, he's now joining our party, and he gave us uh, his uh, special permission slip to go into the secret uh, the secret uh, entertainment area in Troya, which uh, we have actually replaced with a shortcut to Zeromis. There's a reason Eddie hasn't used that pass. Yeah, uh... And Eddie's not ready to fight Zoromus yet. He he needs some items first. He's cutlery. And unfortunately, um, the spork isn't going to do it. Yeah. I also do want to shout out, we missed it on Peasant's side. I believe Peasant's picked up a vanilla rat tail out of the Faymarch creepy chest. Yep, it, was, it looks like it was the uh, vanilla rat tail. So nice little scoop of vanilla there. Yep. And we do see Dave now. Uh, it looks like Blueberry is going to follow Peasants underground. Uh, Nightdew is following Dave through Baron Inn. Dave is climbing up Mount Ordeals, uh, looking to take out some bosses, get some, get this check done. Uh, and, um, I'm sorry, on Peasant's side, he followed Dave's strategy by picking a bunch of train spears. Ooh, nice. And we did have a Sparkle and an Antlion in the Fey March. Uh, I guess... That those are some. That's a king and queen of summons, I suppose. Uh, uh, d Antlion summon when devs, please. I would like to summon Antlion. Maybe we can randomize what the Choclo sprite is. That I think that would be kind of nice. Uh, we did get a job dwarf check. Uh, he's a telecommunications uh, maintenance worker, we think. Perfect for comps tonight. Yes, absolutely perfect. Uh, we do see Dave now taking out the Dark Elf is apparently our first ordeal. Uh, yeah, and that just went down. Yep, yeah, uh, not a particularly challenging ordeal for this mountain. Looks like uh, Pez is going to set up Sheila 1 check, yeah, which is may... good because he hasn't visited Fabul yet, so that'll may be... May as well uh... Uh, simplify the Fabul trips. We'll find out that Sheila's holding a vanilla pan, you have to go back anyways. And... Oh boy, that could have been spicy at the back attack, but it's just a surprise water hag. Edwards, you have to deal with your, your fight now. Both of you. Actually, all three of you. Three of our four characters at this point are named Edward. <laughs> Anna, who are you talking to? You have to specify. If you're always talking about uh, Edge's actual name is Edward too. Yes, uh, she. I. Maybe she is talking to Edge. No, because Edge wouldn't let her die. That. That's. That's very true. Uh, no, Ed, Edge's name is Edward Geraldine. 
Yeah, Edgar is from the other Final Fantasy game that. that Ed, yeah, a Edgar late. is a different Final Fantasy game. See, Night Dew is checking out the Dwarf Castle shops. Yep, uh, has decided to join the uh, Go Underground Early uh, Club and check out some of these shops down here. I've never had a problem fading the underworld until the last minute, right? No, not at all. Also, yes, all, all crown princes are named Edward. There are two crown princes. They're both named Edward, so therefore all crown princes must be named Edward. This is canon. Or just stealing from Zelda very shamelessly. Yep. Ooh, and Enjodev gets rewarded for fading the underground to this point because with that pan from Mount Ordeals. That is very nice. It means he can get and, uh, in one shot. Also, uh, shout outs to Edge's inner demon being Yang, who also gave us the pan. This is amazing. Well, you know. And we have a, a nice vanilla gauntlet, too. So that's going to be nice for Dave to see when he gets down there and realizes, hey, <laughs> a lot of objectives are right there. Yeah, and uh, Pan is, I think, exactly what Dave was hoping to see by doing ordeals before the Underground, because it means that uh, if Sheila, too, has anything of value, all of our other runners are going to have to run through the Sylph Cave a second time uh, to set that up, whereas Dave can route that in with uh, Fabul and Sheila 1. Yep, and um, looks like Blue Bear is going to go back to the overworld and do the full check now that he's done the uh, setup for yep. Sheila 1. So we'll find out what it is probably from him first, Sheila 1, but uh, Dave will give us all both of it at well, the same we'll time. Well, we'll see. Probably. I know a popular play is just to set up the Sheila check so that you have that you can at least do a single dip of a bull, but then runners will often run into the Fabul defense first, just because it's slightly faster on the walking uh, to do it first. But, I mean, you never know. Someone might uh, go for Sheila first. Uh, anyway, for anyone watching in chat who uh, has been paying attention to this gauntlet, you might notice that this gauntlet that uh, Peasants has been fighting in Fabul is not the actual vanilla gauntlet, uh, and that is because of a wonderful flag contributed by our community member Rex Raul uh, called the Alt Gauntlet Flag, which uh, replaces the gauntlet with a selection of random encounters from the area. So much nicer than fighting the vanilla gauntlet. Yeah, in most locations, that's definitely true, and um, in areas where we don't actually have any... Uh, monsters such as in Baron Castle, it'll pull from the uh some certain other area. I think that's um Day March? Yeah, it pulls from the sort of nearest or equivalent area. So the Baron Basement will pull from the Fame March, Baron Castle pulls from the Waterway, uh, that sort of thing. Baron Inn also pulls from the Waterway, I believe. Under Baron, but we did see a Luka key for defending And there's Ooh, a hook from Sheila One. Thanks, Sheila. I, we didn't. I guess we can use that to turn our rat tail in, so that's kind of nice. There's also a character down there. Could be our Cecil. Yeah. Oh, that is very true. We have already seen our duplicate, so at this point, all the characters will be new, and not Edward, which is very important. It could be a disappointment, though. You know, Yang could be the biggest disappointment to see down there. Yeah, I would be rather disappointed if I saw Yang down there. At this point, like we walked all this way just to find Yong. And the reason I'm saying that is because he takes a lot of levels to get online, and um, you know, in this seed, we do want to go kind of fast. Oh, absolutely. Just to assure us, someone from that rat tail. Yeah, I mean, maybe Radio will show up and we can use it. Otherwise, that's kind of a bust. Well, we have white mages in this seed, so I mean, there's no reason to rely on Rydia and her effectiveness <laughs> uh, here. Yeah, we do already have Rosa, and uh, it's definitely not what you wanted to see from the Rat Tail Turning. But yeah, I think the other big disappointment that I would uh, think, be thinking about in the hook route is Sid, actually. Yeah, when Sid's not the hero, he's a pretty much a disappointment anywhere in the seed because he can't yes. anchor. 
Sid is absolutely great as a hero because he's relatively slow. And for those of you who don't know how the agility works, to sum it up very quickly, uh, slow anchor. If your anchor is really slow, that makes everyone that will, makes it so that there's only there's very few number of speeds that things can go. So everything else will be fast, and your bar, your party will be just as fast as the boss. If uh, your anchor is fast, like Edge, for example, uh, there are a lot of different speeds that everything can go, and so uh, your anchor will be very fast, but the bosses and all your characters will be relatively slow. What you're saying is, it's really either hero or zero. Basically, yeah. The survivors are basically crossing over each other's paths. We've got peasants doing the Baron Inn that was done earlier. Uh, Blue Bears going up Mount Ordeals. I do is in the Wool Gauntlet. And Andrew Dave has now gone to the Fay March. You've seen yeah, all these places everyone before. Is, everyone's just uh, covering each other's tracks, so I do want to give a quick shout out to uh, Hush Pyramid for rolling this seed. Uh, and doing our restream behind the scenes. Shout outs to uh, Fiery Blizzard and Beauty and Discovery for keeping us honest here in the booth and making sure that uh, if we say something dumb, that they correct us in chat. And shout that's out that's to never our... happened on stream before. Oh, yeah, it? no, we, we are always totally 100% accurate all of the time. We don't make any mistakes here on comms. Someone clip that. <laughs> <laughs> And I want to shout out our runners as well. Uh, they're putting on a great show for us. Okay, meanwhile, now that uh, we've got Dave heading over to get his uh, self check in with the pan. Yeah, Dave is uh, going to go show us a little bit of new information. Night Dew is finishing up or er, getting through the Fabul defense. Blue Bear is uh, crossing the bridge at Mount Ordeals, and Peasants is also climbing Mount Ordeals. Uh, so we'll be uh, seeing them both get their uh, paladins upgraded wherever he is. He's somewhere in the seed. We promise. Is that somewhere at the back of the giant? Maybe. Yeah, that would be kind of a nasty place to put Cecil. If we do, we're going to put five crystal swords in the seed, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Sylphs uh, decided that Rosa needs a good staff, so they're going to give her a life staff. Uh, that's very nice. Uh, we can have... Uh, we can now cast the life spell uh, infinitely as an item. No more life potions needed. So that's really nice. Yep. Um, and yeah, even though we see a lot of key items so far in the first 20 minutes here, uh, it's going to slow down, probably. Oh, definitely. Uh, we've gotten very lucky with our runners not only finding Dima, Demist, oh yes, not only finding Demist, but also getting an early magma key to get the underground freebies. Uh, and Possum brings up a very important point in chat. You cannot life glitch with the life staff. You have to use life potions or the life one spell. So, life staff not really a life potion replacement as much as it is a life potion saver in certain situations. But you could use life two for the life glitch if you really were uh, a maskist about it. Yeah, but that just like revives the enemy all the way back, and then you have to kill them again. That's no, that's no fun. Luke gets the bad news that oh hey you you skipped ordeals on the overworld. Uh, so sorry. Here's your pan. Uh, now go back underground and do that sylph cave again. Fine. I'm like, fine, I guess we'll do it. We still don't know what that uh, pan turns into. So far, we have a life staff, but there's uh, one other item that's gated by that pan. Yep, and Dave is going to show us what that is as soon as this gauntlet is over with. Yeah. And all of our runners will have one objective on the board. Again, less than a half hour in. This is unusual. Yeah, no, this, er this early objective is very nice. Uh, I mean... The boss hunt's showing up early, generally nice. We only have a Golbez to find at this point. So hopefully, our runners are probably hoping he's she shows up somewhere along the path and then they don't have to think about boss hunting anymore. Yeah, you're hoping it's either uh, 
at one of the other objectives on the moon, so nice little daily double. Or, you know, they just find it along the way. That yeah. could not be very nasty at this point. Uh, Knight Dude making an interesting play, diving into Eblin Cave to go check on the character. We do know that Fusoya cannot be down here because Fusoya is in the Kaipo bed and we have already seen our duplicate character, who is Edward, at both Hobbs and Baron Inn. But uh, this could still be a very useful character as we do not have a warp caster yet in the party and uh, the warp glitch is on. Uh, so our runners are definitely incentivized to have someone who can cast warp when going through Dwarf Castle. Uh, uh, no. Sorry, I was going to say, we've got Dave checking Sheila 2, and oh, it's just a moon veil. That's good for... So that is no, fights, but... yeah, no value directly from the pan, but I imagine our other runners aren't going to fade that pan for too long because it's such a free uh, check. And, I mean, the moon veil is still very good. Yep, it's uh, one of those moon fights that can be very useful, and it's very punchy. Yeah, moon veil... Uh, is a very long-lasting wall, lasts longer than a Star Veil, uh, more than twice as long as the actual wall cast itself, and gives you permanent barrier status, which means that no physical attacks will hit you. It's a really broken item. Especially if you're facing like a wall or something like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no. It, it makes you immune to most things. Not everything, but... Many, many things. Uh, we do see Knight Dude opting to take the Staleman chest in Eblin Cave. Uh, Peasants is also going to go for this Eblin character, uh, as Dave and Wu are launching their hovercrafts. Yep, and they're going to get the bad news that this red tail is not all that great. Yeah. I don't of know. Of course, that their first clue should have been it's a red tail. I don't know what the runners are doing. Uh, I don't know what uh, that Adam and Forge guy is doing, actually, uh, pulling with an Asura summon in the Adamant Grotto. Like, is Asura made of Adamant? Is this the lore? Uh, well, I mean, Asura does have three faces. I mean, she could be more than one material, too, I guess. Yeah, we did see our runners uh, find a curse ring. Uh, I'm more excited by that Thunderclaw Knight Dude just picked up in Eblin Cave. Uh, that's a very nice pull. Even though Odin is off the table, there's still plenty of other things that are weak to Thunder. And You know, there's four disappointing things in a Sid and a... Um... Yeah. <laughs> no, this is fine, actually. This is a Warp Caster and an Exit Caster. This is great. Yeah, I mean, until you're past, I guess, the Dwarf Castle, but... Uh... No, but... Well, sure. But this is great for right now. We take this. This is our, our source of warp and exit. This is an amazing character to find down here, considering Fu is already off the table. And it does look like all four of our runners are going to be finding this edge. Or this tower. I swear I can keep my character straight. Eh, you know. I've seen the tw same 12 characters for a lot of this uh, tournament, so. Yep. Uh, Night 2 is it's going to make a play into Eblin Castle, which is interesting. Uh... Eblin Castle, also uh, sometimes referred to as Sword Castle because of its tendency to drop Crystal Swords and Excaliburs. Uh, not so much a tendency to drop Edge Weapons, but it could, I mean, we could, this could be a play to find an Adamant Armor. Yep, one of the more broken items in the game, just with how powerful it is. Yes, but, um... it's absurd defense, plus 15 to every stat. It's great. Looks like we have a doctor in the castle today, if I saw that right. Ooh. Yeah, that is Dr. Dialogue himself doing some listening instead of talking for a change. 
Yeah, the king needs a better doctor. I mean, this is just not good. Yeah. Unfortunately, Dr. Uge only has one sprite, so we don't get to see Balnab dancing. Yeah, it looks like arty arrows is what was found in the first chest over in Eblen Castle. That's... Uh, not, not what we wanted to see, but I guess we take it, sure. Find a hero and a rope for that rose that could turn out pretty well. Yeah. But... I mean, the rest of the loot might, here might be useful. Uh, Wu is also headed to Eblen, as is Angedave, it looks like. So it looks like uh, Peasants is the only runner who's going to be skipping Eblen Castle today. Yeah, unless he gets Cecil and decides to try his luck. That is very true. If uh, a Cecil could very easily push uh, Peasants back to uh, Eblen. And there's a samurai bow also in Evelyn for those arty arrows. Mew and that untrapped ninja sword, very nice. Uh, mute, mute, and long, mute knife and long sword are nice, but uh, ninja sword is great. Dwarf two is free because it's just a Bahamut here. And oh boy, it's young. Everyone's favorite. Yep, yeah, and Pez is gonna take young because there's no free slots, so you can't say no. I mean, I probably would also take Yong over a duplicate Edward, which is our other choice. Well, yes, I mean, you probably can take a sit-over <laughs> duplicate Edward. I, I, yes, I, th I think you take anyone over duplicate Edward. Yes, we don't have two spoons in this world, you know. No, Only one there, spoon there is everybody. a potential use for one Edward. There is not a great argument for having two Edwards in any party. If you have the opportunity to not have two Edwards. Unless the Duke Witch is on. You are making the Edward fan club very sad, you know. I know. But I'm sorry, Edward's strategies are not made more effective by having more than one. I did not see what came out of that second trap chest. Yep, yeah, uh, I'm sure someone in chat will let us know. Ah! Uh, Thank it's you. a nice thing for someone not in the party. Yes, thank you for, for quickly confirming that that's an Avenger. Great, we'll we'll hold on to it. We can worst case we can throw it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess we could. Best case, uh, Cecil or Kane shows up and uh, is inhabited by this and becomes inhabited by the spirit of the Avenger. And uh, meanwhile, uh, oh hey, we don't need to do Evelyn Castle for an Adamant Armor because there's an Adamant Armor uh, in the form of the Pink Tail at Dwarf Castle. Plus a Stardust Rod, which uh, I guess Tele can hold on to, sure. Yeah, I guess one of the two Black Mages we don't have yet. Or three, really, if you count Fu. I mean, I'm more excited about the Adamant Armor. Yes, that's definitely the more exciting of the pieces there. Yeah. I mean, at this point, we don't have a lot of great options. We could give, we could make Rosa the Adamant Wearer and have Rosa uh, go Burr. Uh, Ed, giving Edge the Adamant is very risky in that Edge is our anchor, and so if we give Edge the Adamant, no one else will ever get a turn. In the overworld, that's probably fine. Yeah, it's, fi it's fine uh, for the overworld, but we're done with the overworld. There's a Masamune that'll also speed Edge up a bit there. Yeah. I mean, we could give it to Tella as well and turn his spells into a powerhouse. Uh, he still lacks MP, but not a bad play. If we get rid of him later on, that's a play, possibly. Yeah, I mean, we're not committed to keeping Tella forever. We can, uh, like, as long as we're not passing the out of keeping him beyond uh, when we need him, uh, we don't care if he gets adamant sickness if he leaves the party. Adamant sickness sounds like it's a really nasty thing. Yeah, uh, as it turns out, the adamant armor makes you uh, absorb all the elements, but it also makes you weak to fire and ice, and then the game uh, doesn't unset those. It's a very well-programmed game, as it turns yeah. out. Yeah, uh, so... The only way to reset that is to equip something that gives you resistance to those elements. 
like uh, any piece of Dragoon gear or like Dragoon shield, Dragoon helm, Dragoon armor, uh, Crystal helmet will do, Dragoon gauntlets, uh, Protect ring will do for your mages. Uh, I think that's about it. Or if you equip like an ice shield and fire armor or something. But who well, does that? As it says, the admin in hand and we'll see who he tosses it on later on. Right now, just keeping it in the inventory. Oh yes, and if you hit someone uh, with a with an adamant armor equipped with a fire or ice weapon, they take lots of damage. Because the weakness is applied before the resistance uh, for uh, weapon attacks, but not for spells. Because this game is very well programmed. Luckily, none of our uh, monsters actually have any of that that we're going to be seeing tonight. Yes, there are no... Monsters don't have elemental attacks, so it's okay. Just like they have no vitality either. Yeah, no vitality, which is why the life glitch works. Uh, you revive an enemy, it comes back with five times its vitality, which is zero. So it comes back with zero hit points, and then it's like, the game is like, wait, there's a monster with zero hit points, that means it's dead. We've got Dave checking in on the uh, Warp Castle over here. Yep, uh, Dave will be getting his adamant shortly. Uh, Night 2 is uh, most of the way through Mount Ordeals, uh, which, yeah, we probably wanted to do this before Dwarf Castle to get the uh, Tello access to Warp, because uh, otherwise we will not have a Warp Caster. And Peasants is going to uh, break some new ground by climbing up the Tower of Babel. Yep, he's going to check the chest for some traps. Also, we have a little glitch with Bluebear stream as well in the meantime. Uh, yeah, we'll, we're working on getting that back up, but uh, for now, uh, we will simply not worry. And a strength ring has been found on Peasant's side in one of the trap chests. I, I mean, we started with one, but I guess a second can't hurt. Well, we'd rather have a Zeus Gauntlet or, you know, Crystal Ring. Oh, that'd be, that'd be much oh absolutely, fun. yeah. Strength Rings are fine. They're not great, but they're not terrible. Anyone other than Edge in this party who could equip them. Found a Siren there, so... Okay, uh... I guess. Sure, we uh, didn't bother stealing the sirens, so the alert dropped one. Neat. I think it was actually an untrapped chest. Oh, it was untrapped, okay. I was not watching that screen closely. Still, a uh, nice find. Ninja Sword again for our That'll edge. make up for the one that he missed in Eblin Castle. Meanwhile, we've got uh, a duel looks like going into the dwarf castle along with uh, Wooper at almost the same time. Yep, everyone is... is kind of meeting up here in dwarf castle except peasants who skipped Eblin Castle and so is a little bit ahead. Uh, I think that was a pair of Zeus gauntlets out of that chest. And we're gonna have a con over a dwarf castle now too. Uh, sure. Yeah, we're having it's a dwarf castle convention. I guess the uh, the door um, thing is something to wear around your neck. Relay some dwarven fashion. Uh, Peasants is now uh, going to trying to steal from the alerts with one hit point. Uh, this could result in Edge's death, but it did not. So we're it's okay. We're fine. Everything's fine. Edge has a Murasame now, and a ninja. Peasants has the superior weapon. Uh, situation and has an adam has put that adamant armor on edge so it's just this is just the edge go burr seed uh okay no one else matters uh, edge is going burr and uh jmac uh see john for the uh pizza it 
doesn't know that yet, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. And yeah, from chat, the Murasami on edge will slow him down a little bit from that Adam yeah. armor. But, you know. It's fine. Edge is just going super fast. We don't care. Some I feel like with agility, the options are either go as slow as possible or as fast as possible, and those are the two best things, and you need you kinda have to lean into one or the other. Obvi like there are breakpoints for Zeromis, but for general uh running through the seed. You either want to just outspeed everything or uh, make everything the same speed. Yeah, I don't do so with the agility stuff in my head, so. Uh... <laughs> it looks like we've got a Leviathan up here at the top of the tower. Yeah, this is probably fine. Leviathan, uh, we slap the Thunderclaw on edge, maybe. Yeah, and with that adamant armor, it should go uh, good. Yeah, that's what the uh, peasant's gonna do. Yep, uh, just make, just swap that in. Edge go burr. And, and yeah, as Poss was pointing out, if we tell it to have the adamant on and the starter stride and cast the three, he could do. Oh, that, that would should, be so fun. That would probably be quads or something like that. Are pretty close. Yeah, but we're just gonna let Edge do four thousand damage a swing. It's not quads. Oh, uh, out, way outspeed this spot. Oh, oh no, an ice too! For 150 damage, I'm so scared. Yeah, as it turns out, this spot doesn't have a whole lot of magic power, so, you know. Yeah, I don't know, uh, what, uh, I missed the boss at the, uh, ruby spot, but I don't know what he was thinking, uh, putting Leviathan in charge of... Uh, guarding the tower because he's not doing a good job. I think Mom Bomb was a great choice for the Super Cannon, though. Hmm. Yeah, that's not something you like to see here because this spot was like a couple hundred HP and now you've got at 9,000 extra stuck onto it. Yeah, this is not fun. Uh, not because it's not... Not because it's hard, but because it's annoying. Really annoying if you did what uh, peasants had and walked in with one HP on everybody. That would be Ooh, a little. Ooh, that would have been really fun. This is why you pause when you walk in there and just click the. Just, just make sure you like look at what boss it is. Like, just press A, get rid of the text box, see what boss it is, see if you need to heal up. Always a good strategy. Yeah, that, that uh, Okopoke would really ruin your day if it's up there because it's half the health meter. Or what's going on? Yeah. But uh, Dave is out of that super cannon fight just as uh, Peasants is heading into it. And Dave will go up the tower as Peasants is going to go down the tower. Yeah. Yeah, well, Leviathan can wash the tower, I suppose, but I mean... When, when does the enemies ever care about washing anything? Yeah, I mean, the tower is also very mechanical. I mean, I don't know if there's any exposed wires, but it does feel like it would be the place where you wouldn't want random water. Uh, I'm told the Lunarians have actually moved beyond wiring. Cool. Okay. Well, that, that's that's great then. then Leviathan's perfectly safe. Okay. And Night 2 has picked up his adamant armor from the pink tail. And that is going on Edge as well, it looks like. So Edge is going to go burr everywhere today, it looks like. Yeah, Ed Edge just needs to go burr. Right, yeah, Peasants is going to show us what comes from the super cannon. I don't think we got a key item from the top of the tower. I did miss what what this leviathan was holding on to but i don't think it was important yeah it wasn't a key item there we go yeah just a dragoon spear so thanks leviathan now we can kill dragons uh, if kane shows up or we can throw this at someone throw throwing it at someone works too oh no, a dragon it's not a dragon
We've already killed all the all the fake dragons. It's okay. And uh, Sid's engineers had the darkness crystal all along. I don't know why they uh, thought that they could just hold on to it and it would we'd be fine. Uh, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have to go uh, pay them a visit and uh, we're gonna have some strong words with them. Well, why? I mean, you know, the whole thing is Sid gave them the darkness crystal to keep them the king of Baron. It would be taken over by a vicious moon alien. Makes total sense, right? Sure, so I let's guess. Like give it to, let's like give it to Cecil. Let's give it to our engineers. They can hide it. Yeah, they'll, they'll hold on to it for now. And now they've decided, okay, you blew up the super cannon. Now you're worthy of holding the darkness crystal. So yeah, we can now uh, go to the moon. It's fine. I mean, the reason they could do that is because when the cannon blew up and the whole thing, then, you know, Sid blew himself up and, hey, the boss is, you know, blown up. So we can give you the thing now. Yeah, it's okay. They were they were holding on to it. It's uh, it's uh, what Sid left to us. Uh, as Chad is pointing out, because of where this was with the tower key. Uh, yeah, we we started with the tower key. Our magma key was at Antlion. We could have had the darkness crystal so much earlier. It's gonna be really funny if Cecil is on the moon dice because at that point it's like you had Cecil ten minutes into the scene too. Yeah, I mean, Mom Bomb is not the best boss to see early on at the Super Cannon Room, but Edge can this would probably have been fine. I mean, it, it will get to explode as soon as the base HP I think in the spot is done. So I mean, just to survive and explode at that point, I think. Yeah, uh, not terrible. But yeah, it could have been could be kind of bad with a different party that doesn't include Edge. Yes, but we're playing to see what the party we have, not the party we might have had. Yes. Uh, Such as like a double Eddie seed with a Porum and a Tella and, you know, one of those really low power seeds. I mean, that's kind of what we have other than Edge. And oh, hi. Oh, hi, Wyvern. Uh, Wyvern, uh, maybe you should think before you give up, you throw pollen at us. Some of us have pollen allergies. Uh, Wyvern's gotten confusing because a bee. I guess I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, pollen, I think all it does is just some damage, and then it inflicts the sap status, which just means our HP is ticking down gradually, which isn't great, but it's fine. Not particularly dangerous. Unlike this, which is basically a really quick way to sap all of the HP. Yes, uh, nu Nuke is very effective at uh, eliminating hit points. Yeah, it looks like this wyvern is fairly fast too. It's gonna one shot pretty much everybody in the party. Yep. I getting all the damage done here is going to be rough. Uh, Edge is only hitting for about 3k around, and uh, he's very fast. But wyvern is pretty much just as fast, if not a little bit faster. Yeah, and even the life is being played here, uh, I'm not sure if this is gonna be able to work with uh, how fast the wyvern is. Yeah, this is a very, very speedy wyvern. No, it looks like we're able to stay alive here. Uh, Engineer has decided that the Fame Arch is scary, and I, uh, we don't want to deal with wyvern or antlion, so we're just gonna go uh, give the Darkness Crystal to the Elder of Lucidia, and he's going to give us a whale in, uh, in return. These old men and their whales, my goodness. I mean, to be fair, this whale is a spaceship that goes to the moon. Yes, yeah, so but why is he hiding it? I don't know. Uh, that That is unfortunate. Um, Peasant Side tried to sneak in the silk web after the remedy, but unfortunately, it got reflected, and now Edge is double slow. I don't think Rose. Well, Tell it was fast. Tell can speed him back up again. That is gonna take so many fast casts. This is not good. Unfortunately, fast is not as powerful as slow, and also Tella is going down. <laughs> good night, Tella. Well, 
I don't think the good, good Barrow's Knight interested in this way. I, I the, oh my goodness. Well, as this, well, hopefully, uh, peasants can recover this wyvern fight, but we are going to see from Dave who's our character on the moon. Oh, Cecil. it's Cecil! Wow. He was just chilling here on the moon this whole time. All you had to do is go do the super cannon room. Very early on, we have no weapons. Yong is leaving, though. That's a good decision. Now we just have to find a weapon for the Cecil. We do- well, we do have an Avenger. We uh, do, for, but- for Everyone except Peasants has an Avenger. And an Avenger is a pretty solid weapon. Unless you're facing d winners at some place that's- That, that is- yes. Game. Unless we're facing d winners that- that is very fair. And not good or, for Golbez like either, and some Golbez other ones. Or or Dark Knight Cecil. Probably don't want to have the Avenger on for Dark Knight Cecil. But, uh, well, it's fine. We'll just go check out the moons, see what's up here. Yeah, we're gonna get a check of the cave value, and see if it's got some value, or if it's got, uh, just a bunch of leftovers from the last moon festival. Now, of course, Wyvern, after avoiding the edge for so long, is now determined that edge shall not live. Right after the edge has gotten zerked up. <laughs> yep. Naturally. Ah, uh, Bored AI is so fun, isn't it, at times? No, oh, it's, oh, it's great. We, we love our custom AI programmed by Boardface himself to uh, be as rude as possible. Speaking of things that are not rude up here, though, this is DMs with those hourglasses. This is free. Oh, yeah, we do have hourglasses. Uh, and we have Tyler, too, with the weak spell. I mean, without the hourglasses, this fight would be, uh, no. Or, or coffins, I guess. Coffins work as well. Yeah, you do have Tello there. I mean, Tello could do an onslaught stone. It's not like it's possible casting it. Uh, they... These guys are very fast and hit very hard. So we are going to hope that they do not punch Cecil. Okay, they didn't punch Cecil. That's good. Yep, so uh, let's see if Dave gets rewarded for this uh, play. Would Cecil have just gotten slinged way up into good levels? Yeah, I think uh, 25 levels on Cecil is a pretty decent reward uh, by itself. Not the reward we're uh, no. Leviathan Orb is not the reward we were looking for. So we've gotten a car wash and we've gotten a um, clinic, basically, from our yeah. checks here. Yeah, these checks are really skewing towards the summons. Uh, I guess at some point we're going to stumble across Bahamut. Uh, where do you think the Bahamut Orb is going to be? Because clearly it's out there. Well, hmm. At this point, let's put it at the Ribbon Room. Why not? That makes sense, yeah. Uh, Ridia is probably at the Giant. Uh, who would be the worst character to see there at this point? Because... Uh... We really got pretty much every character we want, or we know where yeah, they are. Yeah, I don't really know that there's another character we particularly care about. I mean, I would say we want Kane, but we don't have a weapon for Cecil, so Cecil kind of needs the Avenger. I mean, maybe if you want some real black magic power, you could ask for a Palamon here somewhere? Yeah, I don't know. It's a little late for that, I think. I think this seed is going to become the Rosa Cecil and Edge show. And then no one else will matter. But we, it does we, look like... we are contractually obligated to have five characters, though. Yes. Uh, it does look like everyone has decided that the moon is the place to be. We're going to start clearing, and it's going to be great. Uh, we don't. Everyone does have nine key items. So uh, once they find any key item up here, uh, they'll get a bonus uh, to their experience. 
now it's, we have the experience has doubled once you get to 10 yes. kills in this flag set. Unfortunately, we have Plague at uh, Murasami Altar, and that's not good. Plague is awful with a fast anchor. Yeah, unfortunately, our anchor is fast. Even with that admin armor stripped off, it's like, edge is not slow. Yeah, and we don't have any Sirens or Bacchus Wines available in shops for this seed, unfortunately, so... Uh... We don't have any way to have our characters berserk themselves, which would be very nice. And we also don't have any way to, for, uh, to easily grind. But we do have a way for Cecil to um Yes, do that. Cecil has That's the Avenger, it. which does give him berserk. Uh, Blue Bear has conquered the White Spear Altar. Uh, just some Maga Sisters there. Got an Avenger. Yay. Now we have two. Oh, it's very good. Kane ever shows up. I think we're not going to take him this late in the seat at this point. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky to take Kane at this point. That Dude. circle did not get off in yeah, time. Yeah, trying to get the veil off, but you're not going to get it off in time here. Uh, this boss is too fast. Uh, Eddie has a kamikaze though, and uh, we've got a dancing dagger to keep knocking him down, so we'll be fine. It's just not gonna be fast. Uh, we do see some Baron guards here at the ribbon room. That's gonna be some nice experience for Wu Bear. Yep, and with coffins uh, also pretty free. Oh, absolutely. This is a very friendly fight uh, for the ribbon room. Uh. Dave slowing Plague down. Uh, this is great if we're reflecting count. Uh, won't do much else. But I think this plan here is just to reflect the count onto Plague. Revive Edge. And then... Uh, let Plague count Ooh, itself down. That is a hard required... Uh, oh, yeah. Ribbon Harp and a Legend Sword. You gotta do that. Uh, gotta do that Ribbon Room. Because that is... Half of four that will that's our second half of forage plus cave the twin heart for the complete cave magnus objective. Uh, Wu Bear is now a Golbez or an Earth Crystal from Go mode. And uh, that's a package from the Murasame Altar. Probably not what Dave is hoping to see, but it is a 10th key item, which means uh, he'll be getting bonus experience from the entire bottom of the moon, which is quite nice. Yep, and he'll probably be down in the urban room for it soon, find the good news that, hey, this is loaded. Oh, look, it's it's Dark Knight Cecil uh, at the Murasame, uh, or at the Masamune Altar. Uh, and this is not potion party, so uh, that could have a key item. So let's let's but we can we can just not do that. That's okay. Well, you gotta make one fade never seed, right? Yeah, it's fine. And that seems like a you know, fairly nice one, I guess, to fade if you don't have quite the levels to get through that. Yeah, and Wu Bear with the ten key items now having done the ribbon room is going to take a quick siren uh, on these double gold dragons. Get some levels. Yeah, and uh, with Tella around, we can use the weak to make this go a little faster. Yeah, this will this will be handled uh, pretty quickly. It's a nice way to get just a bunch of extra experience here on the moon. Little away with that life glitch, but that's okay. We've got plenty of life bots. And uh, oh, we did not get a life glitch on the back one. That is going to hurt. Now, as chat points out, there is still it is still entirely possible that you have to do that DKC to get through the seed no matter what. And it does look like uh, Dave is going to take this grind fight before doing the moon bosses. Uh, so, uh, 
I mean, we'll get through this decently quickly. It does have the 10 key items, so we'll get the bonus. A little unfortunate that it's going to be... I mean, it's going to end up a little bit higher level. We'll see if that is relevant. Uh, depending on where Wu's levels are. And then Wu Bear is going to trick the Crystal Sword Altar, which yep. is... Uh... The last altar oh. down here at the bottom of the moon, it makes sense. Uh, meanwhile, Peasants has finished the Murasame altar. Night Dew is heading for it uh, to get that objective complete. And Ooh, uh, that's a... Leg. That is a Rubicant. At the Crystal Sword altar. This is relatively free. Uh, these fire counters are not going to hurt very much. Yep, one HP on Cecil because he's got the uh, <laughs> the adamant on. So yeah, this is uh... yeah. Even the glare is not going to kill really anyone here, other than maybe that Tella. Yeah, it's not very threatening. Oh, uh, it take does take out Ed. Oh, you know, because he had the he had the Edmund armor on and it had it off, I think. So that might oh, be yeah. why. That would definitely do it. And we've got peasants coming down here to the bottom of the LST. Yeah, peasants has arrived. Dave is going to take on the White Spear Altar, get this objective done. Uh, there's the Maga Sisters. We've seen them already. This moon, not the kindest, but honestly, not too bad. Uh, Ruby was Ruby is at a fairly friendly spot. Uh, Maga Sisters aren't too too bad. And hey, uh, tell tell aquatic there. Yay. Yeah. Uh, Baron Guards and Plague are not terrible bosses. DKC is honestly not the worst, and Dark Imps at K value are completely free. So this is a fairly friendly moon, I would say. Just a Dragoon Spear at the Crystal Sword Altars, that's a blank. I, I believe Lou darted his his other Dragoon Spear at that, so uh, great, a refund. Speaking of refunds, besides the machine being broken, it's time for uh, Uber to go back down to the Earth, it looks like. Uh, I think he still has to do the Murasame Altar. Oh, did he not do that one? Okay. No, he did not do that one on the way down, so we're going to see Wubear head to the Murasame Altar. Ah, uh, yeah, I see his objective six there now, not seven. Okay. Yeah, has the, that's yeah. He had the white spear done, but had not done the Mura. Uh, everyone else is going to probably work their way towards the, the white spear. Though peasants opted for ribbon room first, which will be good because now he knows he is one boss or uh, one key item from go mode. Yep, he's not going to find that boss on the moon here, but he no. might. might he might find, find the key item. item behind that DKC. And yeah, doing the Baron Guards with 10 key items is very good, uh, because you can life glitch them and get 300,000 experience instead of uh, 200,000. Now we're just going to end up seeing if either of the other runners will take that uh, Masamune altar with that DKC sitting there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all of our runners, well, other than... Actually, most of our runners have ditched the Edward. Engineave still has the Edward, so could potentially leverage that, although I think it'd be quite difficult to get Eddie a turn. Well... Let's see, we got Night Dew then also taking a grind up here with the yep. Gold Dragons. Just gonna do a quick grind on the Gold Dragons, get a little bit of bonus experience. I do appreciate that Gold Strategy has kept the Edwards, and uh, Wombat Milk does not appreciate Edward. But if we were voting on who was gonna win this race, and there were a lot of Eddie fans, it might be a problem, but. Uh... The way the seed is shaking out, it might not really be that bad of a thing to drop Eddie. Yeah. 
And they have not really bothering with the life glitch on the Baron Guards. I mean, we've got enough levels probably uh, with those extra ones. Just the 200,000, we're probably fine. Yeah, I and mean, might... there's a slight danger rate of making Edge too, too fast, but you're not really yeah, about we're not point. worried about getting too many more. We're in the mid 40s. A few more is nice, but not a big deal. Ooh, and uh, Pezzis has gone here without healing, so this could be a little bit rough. Yeah, that is spicy. Uh, everyone but Edge is immediately dead. Edge via tier 3 off? Uh, Edge is probably fine without healing. Maybe needs another tier 2. Yeah, one more tier 2 yeah, for safety more. and we'll be fine. Yep. Okay. So yeah, Peasants Great. will be the first runner to show us what is behind this Dark Knight Cecil. Although Dave well, might not be too far behind. Justice is definitely behind the DKC, but uh... Can't turn the yes. Th thank you for your Justice speech, DKC. Okay, I just hoping for Earth. I Earth mean, it's not an Earth Crystal, but... We'll take an Excal. Sure! Not the holy sword you prefer, but it's no, it's still sword. a holy sword though. And at this point, uh, we we take a holy sword. We we appreciate a holy sword that didn't take too much work to get. Dave is going back there. It looks like after uh, rehealing. Yeah, I mean, this is a relatively quick fight, uh, as long as you're healed up, so it makes sense to just take this on. Yeah, one Cure 2 pot on Cecil does it here. And Edward's going to survive! Hooray! <laughs> and Dave's also going to get this experience on Rosa, so we're going to make up a little bit more experience for him. Okay, yeah, that, that would be why Dave reset. Yeah, the Avenger on. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's idea. no good for D DKC. No not more. here. <laughs> There's his Excal. But yeah, our runners are tearing through this moon, and it looks like the only progression from the moon is the Twin Heart. Which means either everything is on this one really nasty chain, or something's in the Fey March. I'm guessing something has to be in the Fey March. Yeah, I mean we do have the we did get the Forge from the Moon, which is nice, but there there's probably something in the Fey March, and I cannot wait to see what it is. Uh, at this point, it's probably something like Baron Key into Earth Crystal, into something having our Golbez, you know. Yeah. I mean, our Golbez doesn't have that many locations he can be. He can be at, uh, King Queen of Eblin. He can be at the Package. He can be on the Giant in either of the two spots there. He can be behind the Twin Harp, behind the Earth Crystal, behind the Baron Key. That's actually kind of a lot of locations. And that's about it. Oh, and in the sealed cave. So we do have actually quite a few locations. And Wu Bear is our, being our first runner back to the blue planet. We'll see where Wu goes. And yeah, and Dave is up in Excal, down a Crystal Sword Altar Clear. Uh, Wu's going to Forge. Yep, we're going to see what Edge's weapon is out of this. Uh, some of Edge's weapons are quite useful. Some of them are not. Oh, it's been a kind seed so far. Let's go for useless, then. Uh, we can buy defense swords and stardust rods and apples and ribbons. If we so choose. Uh, that's a Sasuke. Yeah, that's a uh, we, <laughs> that, that counts as useful, yes. Right. That is that is a pretty powerful sword. So now it looks like um, 
Uber and so he's gonna go over and try and check out music. I would expect that's where we're going. Uh, Dave did get the speech from Rubikin. Uh, waste a little bit of extra time. Uh, Ruby has to take some time to wish you good luck. Yep. So uh, there is a bit of a meme in the community because it's about fading harps. Uh, I do think someone tried to stick a sign on the black truck before us here saying out of order. Uh, uh, but it's been so long. It's been so long to see the uh, trucos have eaten it because nobody gave them carrots. Yeah, but we uh, here I do need to do our harp. It is an objective. Plus, we do have some very special harp music uh, for tonight. Uh, sequenced by yours truly and chosen by yours truly uh, for our finals. So as uh, Wu Bear makes his way through Cave Magnus, uh, the rest of our runners hopefully will get to hear this harp music multiple times, because uh, hopefully everyone does the harp. It is an objective after all. It could also be hard required. We don't. It know. could be hard required. There could be an Earth Crystal or a Gold Bez here. It's not going to be a kazoo. Un unfortunately, I do not. We do not possess the technology to uh, make the harp sound like a kazoo. Yet. Yet. Yeah. We'll, we'll get back to you on that one. Uh, they'll be in 6.0. At some point, we will, we will add the ability to make the harp songs sound like a kazoo. I, I will, if it has to be, if it has to happen, I will personally record the harp songs on Kazoo. Actually, we'll get, I shouldn't say that. There's too many of them. I cannot do all of them. We'll, we'll get a con together. It's okay, Zito. We yeah. have help with this. We'll just have everyone just record different ones. It's great. <laughs> but I suppose uh, we should probably uh, uh, be quiet and let uh, Edward play us a tune. Yep, time to yield the floor to DJ Spoonie B. Take it away. Uh, unfortunately, that was a rather brief rendition, but it does look like we're about to get a second uh, rendition of the harp immediately. And oh my goodness, that's a vanilla earth crystal. You have to do the twin harp. I love this seed.
Well, uh, we got to hear slightly more of it that time. Yep, thank you to Energy Dave for giving us more by taking out all of the uh, mobs there. Yeah, and we, we, almost, we almost got to hear the second theme. So close. And, oh, we have a third rendition coming up. I don't think it's going any better than the first two did in terms of length. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, but we do have uh, just a Mylon and friends in the Tower of Zot, not particularly threatening uh, for Lou Bear. Uh, I expect Engine Dave will be hot on his heels. Yeah, not even saving. We're just going to charge right in. I don't think there's any real danger maybe at this point in time. I, mean, I think the most dangerous thing would be Golbez at Zot 2, actually. Well, we have to do a 7 out of 7, so I mean, come on, it's got to be Golbez, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we will see. Hope some prayers for Spoon over there from chat for this uh, Zot 2 check. Yeah, unfortunately, Peasants went for an AoE stone to take out the party, but unfortunately, with an Adam and Armor equipped, uh, you can't AoE stone your party because one person resists it, therefore everyone resists it. More you know. Uh, and we see that Rydia is the one who kidnapped Kane. Yeah, Rydia kidnapped Kane today. I mean, that kind of makes sense. Well, I mean, revenge that will bring down the village thing and I, the party. I can, I can definitely see it. And both of them are going to get kicked over the tower. They can continue their little feud. Okay, Stone... Stone will miss, or will hit everyone but your adamant wearer. Stone, Tella is just not in the middle slot and therefore can't hit. And it was just a barren key, actually, out of the Zot check, so I can get to see what that is. Yeah, uh, the ultimate routing combo was perfectly set up. We had Harp leading to the Earth Crystal, leading to the barren key for the ultimate routing combo. But we don't need to finish it because we've already done six of our objectives. We can just go blow up Zoromis and be done with the seed. Can't blow up, there's no new caster. This is true. We do not have a nuke caster. Uh, I meant uh, slowly hit Soromus with a lot of cuts and he'll, he'll go away, maybe? Death by a thousand cuts. Sorry, I like this. Yeah, it's fine. And then uh, we can have uh, John have a barbecue. We can roast uh, some Soromus if it's a sprite yeah. that is roastable at least. Yes, uh, that, that sounds like a great plan. Uh, but there is uh, something special about our final boss. We don't like to randomize uh, where he is in the seed because uh, the script is too big, too mean, too powerful, and I honestly don't want to see any of the other bosses inherit Zoromis' stats. No thank you. <laughs> I, I do not want to fight Baigan with Zoromis' stats. I'll be in the lit four seed. No, be, be no, no, be no free DKC at Zoromis. Please no. <laughs> I do not want this. 
That, yes, that would be uh, lit five. Oh, anyway, bad, we do have... Bad ideas. <laughs> yes. Oh, absolutely an idea for the Bad Ideas Club. Uh, coming up soon in, in our upcoming club season in our Discord. Shout out to the Discord. Anyway, we do have special sprites for tonight for Zeromis. So, for probably the final time this tournament... Whose butt are we going to kick tonight? We are... Okay, that's different. Uh, oh my gosh, I love it. Uh, Team Wombat Milk is fighting bold Team Bold Strategy themselves. Uh, this fight, uh, this Zoromus is going very fast. We're doing big damage. Uh, Andrew Dave has entered the Z fight as well. Uh, it does have a uh, better weaponry on Cecil, uh, but no spoon for Eddie, unfortunately. Yeah, so, I mean, Dave's gonna have three characters pumping all the damage, and, well, um... But I actually do believe there is a second a Z sprite. We'll see, uh, is this Z... Is Andrew Dave about to fight the same, uh, sprite as Blue Bear, or is it perhaps... This is not Zelda 2. Is this perhaps a different... a different... but? That doesn't look like the same but. No, this is the other team, uh... Wombat Milk. Yes, it is Wombatimus. in all of their glory. Nerf Big Bang over on Bear's side. Everyone but Tella survives that. Yeah, uh, Tella probably was not going to be contributing a whole lot uh, for this fight, so we can, we're fine. Bro's just gonna keep everyone up. Uh, we're gonna get through this. Peasants has just finished the Tower of Zot. Uh, we'll get his Crystal Crystal. And Night Dew is climbing up that Tower of Zot. Uh, so we'll be in the Z fight pretty soon. And, uh... Yeah, this is a nail biter fight. I think uh, Dave has a little bit better damage output. Uh, yeah, a bit better with that Excal compared to the Defense Sword. But Wu does have the extra Yang hanging out. And oh boy, that Zoromus for Dave is very slow. And Excal Avenger is doing a lot of work. Yeah, meanwhile, a lot of Big Bangs coming over on Blue Bear's side. Yeah, uh, there's a Big Bang for both of them. I think that was nearly simultaneous Big Bangs. And both parties are fine. At least the ones that we care about in the parties are fine. Blue did have a decent advantage heading into this fight. Uh, so, But I think uh, Dave is definitely saving time overall. Peasants about to enter the fight now, too. Yep. Uh, doing the thing that I always do and talking to the NPC who says that there's no return. Thank you, uh, NPC, for wasting our time. NPCs do other things? Uh, no. Some waste your time more than others, but uh, they always waste your time. Uh, 
Uh, we had direct nukes coming out. Yeah, I think uh, Dave has gotten through more of the script just with taking fewer actions here. Oh, it looks like and, that's Oh actually... my gosh, that is, yeah, that is a crumble. That is Enter Dave done. It, overall in first place as Wu gets rocks. Though Peasants does have a decent lead into this Aromas fight. Yep, you know, Z is the final boss for a reason. There's never really a free uh, Z fight, even though with, you know, 4,000 HP on the Yang, it might look like that, but, you know. Yeah, there is always, there's always a little bit of risk, and that is GG's to Woo Bear as well. Uh, we are going to hold off on interviews because we will be doing team interviews, so we'll, we'll be doing the interviews after everyone finishes, or after our... Uh, after both runners on a team finish uh, for these races. Since our runners had uh, such similar routes and uh, finished so close together. And that's, yeah. really, like, that's a great thing for a finals race, which you have, you have all four runners pretty close together on this one. Yeah, I don't expect anyone to finish past the hour and 30 mark, which is amazing. I think faster than any of my finishes on a uh, Moonville Dexter scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but, yeah, Dave finished this uh, first place overall, 1 hour, 22 minutes, 48 seconds. Just 29 seconds ahead of Wu Bear at 1 hour, 23 minutes, and 17 seconds. And I believe Dave finished the tournament overall 8 and 0. Uh, never dropped a match. Oh, 9 and 0, right because he had to do the tiebreaker match, and won the tiebreaker match. Uh, because uh, Gold Strategy and New Moon were exact, had exactly equal records, and so we had to do a little tiebreaker, uh, which they've won, to bring uh, Gold Strategy up to seed two. My goodness. Yeah, we, uh, Peasants lost his edge for a bit in that Z fight, so it's a little bit uh, sketchy. Yeah, this but Z is he's recovering. Fairly, it's fine. Moving fairly fast on uh, Peasants' side. Everything is fine. Uh, I'm just checking stats to see if we have comparisons. Uh, 15 out of 17, yep, that's what both runners did. 9 out of 13 characters, yep, both runners did that. Uh, Blue Bear opened two more boxes. That made all the difference. Right there. <laughs> Definitely. It's those two boxes. Those two boxes. Could be a, a little bit of menuing here or there. I yeah. Mean, oh, there's... But, a, I mean... But, but, but it's seconds. is like, that, that could be just even a brain fart. Oh, there's so, there are so many things that could act 29 seconds. Be. I'm completely joking about the two boxes. They opened different boxes. But... Yeah, this is... Yeah, Peasant's having a bit of a rough fight here, and uh, Night Dew is headed into the fight now. Uh, has slightly better levels on the whole team. Uh, does have Edward instead of Yang, but... Overall is a bit stronger, less likely to go down to a bad bad Big Bang roll. Yeah, this and that could a get... little bit low, considering we're getting another... Uh, yeah, this is, here this is interesting. Oh gosh. I think if Peasants wipes here, this might be really bad. It's going to be rough to recover Rose from, but survived. Rose is alive. That's really good. Oh my gosh. Because uh, Night Dew has a pretty safety fight. I don't think... I don't think Night Dew is likely to lose. It's po I'm not going to say it's impossible, but I think he's not very likely to lose. Uh, right, peasants go down there. Peasants has a chance of getting wiped at this point. And it's uh, it's a little bit scary. And yeah, I think uh, Night Dew just has a little bit better damage output coming out from his two Zerkers than uh, Peasants does from just the one Zerker and the darts, but... Ooh, but there are rocks. 
But Peasants is on Meteo phase, so I think this is fine now. And Cure 4 is queued up, so this is going to probably be GG for Peasants, uh, barring something going a little bit off the rocks. Yeah, I think everyone in this party has enough health to survive another round of rocks, and I don't think we're going to see more than enough, one more round of rocks. And yeah, that is GG's the for Peasants, uh, finishing with an official time of 1 hour 28 minutes and 3 seconds, and that means Team Wombat Milk has officially won the Evelyn Elixir League. But not by that much. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, when all of a sudden done, it's like, um, yeah, yeah, no, it's it's, it's it's not a tie. Okay, it does sound like we are now joined by members of Team Wombat Milk. GGs. I heard tie. Tie? Huh? No, it, it was, was, was not a tie. A tie. <laughs> no, it wasn't. no, it was just both of you finished within uh, a minute of your opponents. It's fine. Oh, exciting! I thought like. They extended the you know barrier to like forty seconds or no, <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No, we three minute not. time. <laughs> 40, forty minutes. Forty minutes time. <laughs> yeah, no. GT is on a, a well run race from uh, both of you. Thank you. Uh, Thank some you. better than others. Uh, one zero against peasants in tournament races. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> We've never gone against each other in in a, in a race in the tournament. So two like, two two you beat me in the other podcast as well. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, oh true. True. Two o. Two o. Two o. I suppose so. Anyways, how's how's everyone doing? Yeah, we're we're doing just great. Uh, I guess uh, my first question is, uh, has it's uh. What was the motivation to mm. dive straight underground and skip Eblin Castle and go uh, opening boxes in the tower instead? Oh, um, I don't know. Didn't need it. Uh, it, it was like I, I, I was, was happy to come back to Eblin Castle if need be, um, but like with an edge. And then I had like two mute uh, daggers. I was like, you know, that's fine. I'm, I like I don't I don't really like the initial Eblin play, but I like doing it at some point if need be. But then doing the tower because I had like the lightning gear and getting two edge weapons and a Zeus goal and I was like, well, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Definitely worked out in your favor, I will say. Eblin Castle had like, I mean, there was a ninja sword sitting in an untrapped chest, which was a little bit uh, unfortunate to miss. But then the trap chests in Lower Babel gave you all the stuff you needed. Yeah, and what they have. Uh, there was like was... a Murasame and a ninja sword in there. Nothing like oh. super, super and, amazing. And no, I had a Mazamu. Azuz Gauntlet too as well. Oh, uh, well, that's, that's cool. I guess. But it, I, it did mean you were unfortunately down the Avenger from Eblin uh, until partway through the moon. Yeah, I think after I got Cecil, it was the, the next check I did had an Avenger. So yeah, it was so it's, essentially... it's whatever. It's fine. Yeah, yeah we actually... um pre-race we met a game then we're like all right i'm gonna do evelyn you do uh tower trap chest one of us is gonna hit you know adamant and then neither of you did yeah it's also I, not true totally we just made that up <laughs> <laughs> i said yeah, lightning I mean, like, like the heroin robe um um like, good heroin light, light arrows. i did have heroin robe oh my God. um which which meant i was at a lightning like claw which meant i could try stealing a siren once and then attack with rosa if, if it missed it missed every time so i didn't get any sirens from it but uh didn't actually yeah, need to do any sirens was, to seed it was a seed where it would have been really nice bacchus would have been nicer yeah was there that, no bacchus that or nice the sirens? Bacchus. how was there no bacchus or sirens like what's up with yeah. that I don't know. The... Here's all the Zerkers, by the way. JK. No, no yeah, problems. no, you get you can have Rosa and Tella as your Zerk casters. Enjoy. Yeah, I mean, it got the job done, but still. Yeah, I mean, there's not that much to talk, to talk. I feel like the seed ended up being pretty linear. It was very linear, yeah. Did anyone else do Wiven slash spend no. a million years on Wiven? Because... Did I not? I did. Where was Wyvern? You were talking about that. And this this uh, was in, in the Fae March. Like the Fae March oh, game. Oh, yeah, no, I saw that and was like, eh. 
I mean, it's I went, fine. It's I went fine. to do. I mean, it. I would have had RDRs at the time, but. Eh. I went to do it, and it was it was it was like looking fine. It was not particularly fast, and then after the remedy, I silk webbed, and he put the wall up just a second beforehand, and it, the wall reflected onto my head, <laughs> and I couldn't was, get the remedy after that. I was so was, close. It would have. It was so fun to watch because it was like, oh, you're getting really lucky. None of these nukes are hitting edge. This is great. No. It's wonderful. And then, and then the silk web hits edge. And then he, he just can't beat the remedies. And then he just stops taking turns and it's like, well, I <laughs> guess that's the fight. Do <laughs> oh, so not have, um, arty arrows were from Dwarf? No, they were uh, the, the, no, the arty arrows Castle. came out of Eblin Castle as well. Oh, yeah, that's Sorry, buddy. Yeah. I didn't yeah. do that check. You didn't do that check. I anyway, I spent like seven minutes on that. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. The time you lost to Wyvern was about the time that everyone else wasted in Eblin Castle. Well, I guess there's that. I guess I also did the tower as well, so I didn't really... I didn't... I didn't yeah. It wasn't really an equalizer. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a pretty silly riding decision, but... Yeah. But it didn't... It was... was no, it's, I think it's a defensible. It's yeah, fun. it was a fun, spicy play, and... I, I didn't mean, it look didn't at it. work out, but... You didn't sink too much time into it. You sank it just to the doing? just about the right amount of time know, into it. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. There's a few fights where I'm like, all right, I'm gonna throw my dragoon sphere in the reward. Dragoon sphere is like, oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. That was also very fun. <laughs> it was very the, the seed had jokes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, the seed had so many jokes. Uh, also, shout out. Was there a boomer? Sorry, I don't need to. No, go ahead. No, I didn't find a boomerang. Or full rant? Yeah, full, like I, I was so annoyed. I think we saw a full moon on Engadave's side at least. Yeah, I, I saw, saw yeah, the end there. The I was looking. He had all of the cool things. That's Cal and apparently a full moon. Yeah, Dwar a Dwarf Castle had them for sale. Oh, th that was the only one that I didn't check. Ah. Yes, that's the only one I didn't check as well because I would, I just I had to do the exit out and it would be slower. That's if exactly I could... the same. Exactly <laughs> it would be slower the same. if I wouldn't check the. Uh... <laughs> exactly the same. It's too funny. Uh, I'm like I have like six drain spheres. I don't need a boomerang. I, I think I checked like, literally every every shop in the game except for that one. Oh my god. Uh, maybe not Silvera as the well. Classic. Silvera had in a box apparently from what chat's saying. Oh yeah, of course it did. The two <laughs> two places. <laughs> Yeah, no, the two places you never want to go. It's fine. Every place no check is exactly what you want. Yeah, this is how it works. <laughs> yeah, every every chest is a Christmas order or something like that, right? Something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. No, yeah, that was that was it was a fun seed though. I uh I, I don't mind edge heroes, they're kinda of fun. I didn't even look at my agility, but like going into Z with like whatever forty, fifty I think agility. It, I think it was Someone sixty agility. Yeah. We did. I think someone did the math, and it's sixty. You had sixty agility heading into Z. <laughs> I mean, I can go check right now, I guess, but it's a lot of agility. So much agility. But yeah. Then the, my edge just took the counter nuke anyways, which I guess <laughs> a lot of things happened, but that like kind of lost me it there because uh, it was like five k plus that I was losing per turn for a little bit. Also wow. happened to me. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Through the cabinet, and I was caught in a darting loop. Yeah, yeah. So like, I, could, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't zerk him more. I would just wipe. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. No, those are those are some interesting Z fights. <laughs> Not because they were like particularly stressful in that it was like, oh no, this party needs to do everything right or they wipe. It was just, oh, the RNG did not work out well. Nope. <laughs> Also, maybe I shouldn't have put the Adamant on Rose. I was just a little nervous. Yeah, it, die. it worked out. It worked out. Well, not really. Not for me. Sort but... of. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Peasant specifically won, so it, it covered my uh, my bases. Yeah. Uh, no, the difference maker there was not sitting through the uh, the DKC at the bottom of the moon. Yeah, I went bottom up, so I didn't have 10 key items, and I didn't have cure 4, and I'm like, ah. Eh. Yeah. That's what I heard, though, that uh, Top Down, yeah, I mean, makes Top sense. Down turned out to be the play this seed because uh, it was a play get Mura holding onto a key item. And then it was yeah, just... Yeah, that's the only, I think the only key item up there, other than, um... Other than the, the, the object, the two, yeah, uh, in the ribbon room, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah sorry, not, yeah, ribbon room. It's very funny. It was just the two in the ribbon room, plus the, the package at Plague, just to get you to ten. Yep. That goes. Yeah. I know, it was a very fun race to watch. Uh, 
the I fact that both races were so close uh, yeah. was really fun. It's good too because I put in like probably um, that'd be like at least a hundred hours of practice over the past couple weeks into um, Diablo Four, so <laughs> I'm happy that it was uh, at least enjoyable to watch because I have not touched this game in a little while. Uh, yeah. Oh, Not well. sponsored, by the way. But yeah, I guess... Uh, I'll a I guess I will ask this right now. Any ideas on your songs and and sprites? I'll have to chat to the team about it, I think. Yeah, do we um, get four songs I believe you get sprites? four songs and four sprites oh. as the winners. Uh, and Poison Walk? Poison Stairs, sorry. <laughs> no? Okay. No. <laughs> no. Um, no I think we agreed as a team beforehand if we won that we were gonna donate one of the skin one of the sprites. Um maybe the song too, just to limit my choosing to uh the fourth place team since I didn't like get anything, which is kinda sad. Um yeah. so yeah, yeah, so we're gonna donate. So I, okay. I'll I'll give up mine and I get probably my song too, just again, so I don't have to uh think of something. <laughs> <laughs> that is very generous. Yeah, but mm. I mean, I love the sprite that we got. Uh, it was, I'm a cute little bear in PKC. Skelet did yeah. an amazing job. It was really awesome. Oh, yeah, and yeah. the other team as well was, was beautiful. It was, it was awesome seeing the, Skelet, the, the other yeah. team. Cause I, I knew that our team had one. I wasn't sure if we were going to, you know, I, I had a feeling that we'd you know, obviously go against the, like, the bold strategy in the Z5, but it was cool seeing them and then knowing that they were going to see us as well. Yeah, yeah. no, I really, really I the Z sprites tonight came out really well. Shout so out to actually, uh, She actually knew what um, Peasant's uh, <laughs> little little yeah. guy was. Uh, this was, was deep, a really deep. niche cut, and she got yeah. it. <laughs> it's from Homestuck, and it would be a uh, very. Uh, yeah, it's like a. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's what our plans are. I, yeah, talk to the team for the, the sprites and figure it out. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you made it to the end, you pulled out the victory. Uh, in this tournament, uh, what are your thoughts on just the tournament, how the tournament was overall? I loved like 95% of it. I'll, I'll probably do the feedback thing at, at some point too, but yeah, like, it, I loved the team open. aspect. It was awesome. Had so much fun with these guys. Like, these are like the best teammates. It was so much fun. Even if we didn't do well, it was a blast just hanging out every night and, you know, practicing and, and playing and stuff like that. So these guys are amazing. And, um, yeah, I appreciate being dragged across the finish line since I lost my last two races. <laughs> but every week, I mean, we, we we went a lot of like one ones. So every week, the, the people who needed to win won. It was just amazing to see. So it's really cool. But, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, my minor complaint was like I was really hoping that all the players could have played in you know the playoffs, but yeah. I understand like ties and, and different things it's hard it's hard with four people being it's hard with four people to make a format and we tried to do that a little bit by saying hey you can't just submit the th same roster for both weeks i'm glad that yeah. happened yeah 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 because we were talking about that and we we're like that's what we we're gonna do we we're gonna like have jmx set, and set. yeah yeah, and, yeah. Um, so that was the plan so then when they announced it it's like oh perfect yeah no, it was something we intended just to be Sorry. like, no, everyone should participate. But then we realized, oh, we forgot to actually put that in the rules. Let's like yeah. announce that real quick. <laughs> That's very fair. But yeah, Potion Party was like one of my favorite flag sets in a long time. It was a blast to play. And yeah, other than that, I really, I, like I said, the vast majority of the tournament I loved. And for me, um, so this tournament was awesome. Like the. the like I've been playing for Enterprise for forever now, but like the, the ability to be able to play with my friends and to to like uh, I don't know have other people rely on you makes it like every race feel so much more like worthwhile. It was, it was just really great. Um, I had incredibly good teammates, and um, all of them got so much better like during the tournament. Both Charlie and J Mac, I see and D uh, rank player were like in like they were already very good players, for uh, but like just incredibly good. Like last week, Charlie beat me like and he was a you know id rank player like he he, he he put in so much practice and it was like obviously showing J Mac put in so much practice and it, it, it was it was showing it was like like i i think our team was already strong and then like like all all of my team it just like blew it blew us out of the water so it was like i don't know that that's just awesome that um that like it felt like we were like working together to make each other better and stuff which um 
is is something that I haven't done in for Enterprise in ages because you know I've been yeah, I learned what I needed to learn a while ago. <laughs> the other thing, so it's it's really nice to kind of go back to to learning again as well. The tournament was really fun. Um, yeah, that, that's basically it for me. It was just sick. Yeah, I'm. I will say, I for one, I'm very happy that finally my dice that keep doing my bracketology have made a correct prediction because they keep predicting that you're gonna win peasants and you did it. I think every bracketology is <laughs> It's like I'm gonna win. It. Yeah, every single time the dice I roll my bracketology randomly every time and every time they're like peasants is gonna take the whole thing. I've come very close a couple times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you made top four and. I've, I've made top four twice. <laughs> You've consistently done better in tournaments than I have. Ever. But they finally do it in the tournament that doesn't have bracketology. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, bracketology is in our hearts always, right? So it's fine. I count it. Oh, gosh. So what are your y'all's plans now that the tournament has wrapped up? Just re um, related to Free Enterprise. Oh, I, with Free Enterprise? I don't know. Let's see what they do next. I don't know what's on, like, our leagues coming back? Like, that could be cool. I'll we're, do whatever the next tournament is. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're working <laughs> we're working out the details of club season still, but there is going to be some clubs. Nice. Um, there is, of course, going to be another tournament. Oh, of course. Yeah, I kind of hibernate, honestly, <laughs> between tournament season. Yeah, <laughs> that is completely fair. But I, I definitely like play some of the clubs there. There are a lot of very creative people out there. A lot of fun stuff. Uh, well, I don't want to hold you here too long. Uh, so, unless you have any final thoughts on uh, the seed, the tournament, uh, or Gwaren, you have any other questions you want to ask? I mean, the seed really didn't lend itself to a whole lot of questions in terms of strategy or choices. I mean, it was pretty linear, like you said, so you covered it all. And I will let you two go off. Uh, Ubera, I assume, go off towards whatever it is, or towards the rest of your night, uh, peasants, to the rest of your day. Go <laughs> eat some lunch. <laughs> 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 Thanks for the restream, and Thanks for the tournament, the oh, cool. admins, everything. It was, it was awesome. So I appreciate everyone. Yep. And GG's That's to fun. my team. GG's to Ubera, Baymac, and Charlie. Incredible runners. God bless them all. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Uh, just thank you for doing all the things and setting up the tournaments. I know it's a lot of work, so it's like so much fun. And um, yeah, I love everyone. Love my team. Cool. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Yeah. Right. Good night yeah. and Chuchi again. Thank you. you. Bye. And it uh, does sound like we are now joined by. Uh, our members of Bold Strategy, Night2 and Engadave. GG's to both of you. Yeah, well, thank, thank you very much. I mean, first off, I have to say, uh, Engadave, great call to not go underground without finding the pan. <laughs> you were the only one to not go underground before finding the pan. Mm. And, and the amount of times I've gotten burned by. You know, immediately diving to a shield one, then, oh, Pan was at a series zero spot? No. We do it yeah. first. And it worked really well for you. Yeah, I don't know what the other ones were thinking. I was definitely thinking, like, you know, okay, I've got this magma key. I want to check my characters. Maybe we have, you know, Coffin Sire, and I can bump up Rosa, get the Berserk going, and then just kind of run through everything else as well. Didn't happen, no sirens. That is, yeah, that is also fair, but unfortunately the seed said you can't have sirens, and also you can't have uh, Bacchuses. <laughs> Prohibition. I don't, know. I, found... <laughs> I don't know, I found the uh, underground brewery in Watery Pool, so it was fine. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of Bacchuses here and there, it's, that's, that's all you need. I'm not, in the brewery. I'm not in the wine cellar. There were two down there. Yeah, um, I guess as the seed moved along, it felt like, honestly, uh, at least from our perspective in the booth, uh, it felt like a pretty linear seed. Were there any points where you felt like there was an interesting sort of 
choice to make. Hmm. Really, the biggest one for me um, was I was after finding that ribbon room and hitting the two key items in there. It was really tempting, and I wish I would have. Obviously, it was really tempting just to dive and go check those and see. I mean, but the thing that kind of held me off was the fact that you know I only really had you know one boss check and you know twin harp there because uh, you know because forge is terminal. I'm mm -hmm. thinking, okay, you know, there's just, you know, three checks here, and then the moon just kept being free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's and, absolutely. Yeah, I think, I think, to make this point, the real, the real, the, the real decision point of the seed was when do you bail on the moon? For yeah, me, I, was... full, I full cleared because I wanted levels. Yeah. And the author mentioned no sirens. There were sale. no sirens for sale, so yes, it's very understandable to clear, especially given how easy a lot of those bosses were. Like, that was a, DKC, that was basically free, there's a bunch of experience, and you get an Excal out of it, great. Now you have a good Holy Sword for Cecil. Uh, Rubicon at Crystal Sword Altar, uh, not super bad. I mean, it's a little bit annoying, but whatever. And also, like, who could predict that the harp would just give you the earth crystal? We we I mean, randomize things here. I mean, it is a pyramid world seed, and we know pyramid loves the harp, so of course the harp was hard required. We should have yeah. known that. I, I suppose that is how it works. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, as I was saying, aside from that, you know. Uh... You know, edge anchoring is a heck of a thing, and uh, aside from my, you know, too angry to die failing on plague, I mean, I can't really, you know, fault too much of, you know, what I did on that seed. So, uh, I mean, you just, just kind of have to tip your hat to peasants in this case, so. Yeah, it was an interesting uh, to see. I think uh, what I... Peasants did spend a bit of time on uh, the sparkle at the Fame Arch, which turned out to be Wyvern. Uh, did not get through it because of an unfortunate Silkweb incident. Uh, Wyvern got wall up too fast? Uh, yes. Uh, and then the, the Silkweb hit Edge, who was oh, the only oh Zerker. No. Whoops. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then Wyvern Edge stopped buffering turns properly and everything went bad. And it's, yeah... Uh, but did save a bunch of time skipping Eblin Castle. Now, I can't be upset about that Eblin. There was a nice shiny piece of Hanzo in there, at least. Yeah. And uh, a ninja sword, because apparently those weren't for sale either. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, peasant, I, I mean, Peasants got very lucky pulling a Zeus Gauntlets, a, a ninja sword, and a Murasame out of Lower Babel. Mm, yeah. But, it, I mean, to be fair, that was very lucky that those all rolled as, like, useful items. Definitely, this was the kind of seed where you don't really want to do both. No. No, no. <laughs> but yeah, it was, I mean, it was very close on both sides. Uh, I think you two, you had the faster Z fights overall. Uh, I do want to ask, actually, Edward. <laughs> I'm a fan, but why? Could we, also, could I find a spoon? It just didn't happen. And I didn't feel like... Uh, I already have the cat balls for Yang, so... Um, <laughs> there was that. Yeah, I mean, I was I was holding out for a spoon, and had he found his flatware, he would have got something there. But, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it was... Uh, it was definitely the Edge show starting out, and... Uh, you know, at, at the end of it, it was like, okay, these Eddies really aren't doing anything here for me um and yeah it just at the end you know i was finally able to jettison one for uh tella and then uh and then the guy showed up and i had the angry stick out of eblin so yeah I, you know had the spoon come up anywhere we would have used him but uh it was not to be yeah uh sadly uh the spoon not available easily oh. either behind that baron key or in the fame march uh so just no. And 
Uh, so, like this point, you did three man Z very easily with the. Uh, yes, you did not. Need, you did not need anyone but Cecil, Edge, and Rosa. It's kind of my whole thing with Yong there. I'm like, well, I could, you know, spend a little bit of time kidding him out, but why bother? Very also, fair. lack of Bacchus means eh, you makes it less attractive to have all, all the extra melee. Especially because one of your Zerk casters is uh, Captain Potato Agility. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. It was not a very, like, Zerk a bunch of people friendly seed. It was very much, you're going to go with your couple people and they're going to do really well. It was not a caster seed either, the way the characters fell. <laughs> no, it was a Edge and Cecil and Rosa show seed. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we got, like, you know, I know we like had a couple canes and out there, but we kind of got a little, like, spoiled in terms of agility. And, you know, I'm used to used to doing this, having some of these slower uh, runs here. Uh, you know, get the twins who never showed up there either, and all of a sudden it's like, um, okay, yeah, we're, we're going fast for this one. I'm like, oh, well, that that's great. Yeah. yeah. Moral of the story at the end, anchoring is optional. Yes. No, I mean, you both ended up having faster Z fights. Uh, Wubear actually entered the Z fight first on stream, but didn't have the Xcal from DKC. Decided to skip that one on the moon, and so uh, you were able to catch up just by sheer damage power, because a defense sword is not is good, but not that good. And then... Uh, and Edge dropped also on his fight, I think, too, at one point. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Peasants had some very bad nuke RNG and didn't have as many levels as you did Night 2, but was a bit further ahead through Zot. Uh, that, that was kind of the thing when I walked up to it, because taking that whole moon, especially with everything pretty much aside from that uh, from, from that plague fight there, everything else was 10 key items plus the one Siren we found. I mean... It was kind of the whole thing. We're like, well, I kind of want to get out of here. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, when I stepped up to the Z fight, I'm like, I don't even care about agility because uh, Big Bang can't kill anybody in this party. I mean, that is very fair. Uh, he had a little bit lower hit points as well, which made the fight a little bit sketchy. Uh, a high roll Big Bang could have knocked down that Rosa. But... Yeah, but that was where it came out to be 1300 HP instead of like, yes, it was. <laughs> it was close, for sure. I mean, as the times indicate, but uh, one bad roll could have easily swung things your way. I mean, like I said, I don't feel bad about my play there. Um, I kind of feel bad about letting Dave down here, perfect record and all, but uh, <laughs> uh, at the very least, he can hang his hat on that one at least. But yeah, yeah it's. Uh, yeah, um, I, I don't even really feel like I'm letting anybody down. It's just more of the whole, like, you know, uh, uh, I can say that, uh, you know, yeah, I went three and five, and yet, you know, like, I lost to Kyrgios by, like, 13 seconds, uh, you know, 30-some seconds here, two minutes to Martin. Uh, you know, they, we had close races, and, you know, uh, for, you know, roll the dice here or there, um, you know, I get through it, but, you know, hey, you know, it's this the finals, and that's, you know, the, this is where the... Uh, you know, the good players are, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that does it for me on the seed. Uh, but uh, a couple questions just about your tournament experience. Uh, what, how has your experience been with this tournament? Hey. Overall, the, the team concept was... I think it worked out well for all of us. I got... Hmm. Overall, it was a good experience. The team concept was good. It led to not just complete blowouts, which doesn't feel good to be on either end of. Yeah, there, there were things, you know, yeah, there were, you know, of, of course there, you know, like, you know, sometimes like the, you know, the matchups, you know, if they went, you know, up or whoever gets paired up or down, but I mean, that was going to happen, but I mean, the way we definitely handled it here, um, you know, like I said, like, like he said, I, I think it went off rather well, it showcased, you know, some of the people that you, you know, you don't see, you know, 
in favor, you know, like, you know, where you see the end of a tournament, you know, your Pancras and your Dakar is there, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it got everybody really involved. I love the team concept. Um, yeah, I think it was a pretty good success here. Did you care for Potion Party more or Moonvale Mixer? Personally, and this is not to say I disliked Potion Party. Uh, I mean, personally, I'm kind of a little more of an old school player here, so Moonvale Mixer did kind of, you know, uh, it, it did, did kind of go a little bit more towards my uh, wheelhouse there. But um, it, both of them were actually really enjoyable, especially like even you know, with some of the practice we were doing that's last night. Um, yeah, just kind of getting back into that. That was one heck of a potion party. See, we rolled there, but yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. I think both flag sets, you know, definitely kind of, you know, shook it up enough to be, you know, different there. And you know, I, I, I will join anything. I love anything that actually has C hero. Just you know, because I like it. I like weird agility. <laughs> uh, for me, honestly, it was potion party. I enjoyed playing Hop to your Shop when it was on ladder. Which this had, you know, echoes of. K Trap's always a good time. So, uh, again, not taking anything from Moonvale Mixer. That felt very comfy coming. It's pretty much all the tournaments I played in the past since I joined. <laughs> but the combination of Sea Hero, K Trap, and just feeling like a ladder flag set I enjoyed pulled me more towards Potion Party. Yeah, I think it was a really interesting contrast between the two flag sets. And it was uh, definitely designed that way, where Moonbill Mixer was supposed to be more... This is what people are used to as a tournament flag set and Potion Party was, we're going to try something new and see how it sticks. That'll hopefully be higher variance, but also still interesting and not like... The same strategy works for every seed. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, like, like I said, I mean, this is. I'm, I'm definitely. Um, uh, I mean, I'm. Pro I'm pretty easy pleased. I haven't played a tournament flag that I haven't liked, honestly. But yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I, I think you did succeed with the whole potion party thing, and I kind of, you know, kind of like that kind of format, kind of going by. And this is from a person like, you know, I know Dave says he, you know, like hop to your shop, and I am like, I, I am not a supermarket sweep person. I, I'm pretty solidly. I don't want to say anti shop, but. Uh, I definitely, uh, I, I definitely kind of lowball the shops, really. So, uh, you know, having that where it was kind of a mix between, yeah, you still need to kind of go out there and loot, and you know, everything you know is out there. Only you know the safeties are off this time. You know, it, it, it does work. You know, it, it, Crystal Sword Cecil solves a lot of problems, but not all of them. So, yeah, I, th I think that was also part of it too. Mm -hmm. Uh I guess one last question. Uh, being in second place, you did... I mean, you did make it to the finals. You still get uh, two Harp Songs and two Z Sprites, I believe, uh, to split across your team as your team sees fit. Uh, I just want to ask, do you, either of you have any ideas about what you are thinking about putting in the, either of those pools? I really haven't given it much thought myself. I'm, so, I'm sure it's something we'll all talk about soon. That is I totally listen. fine. Yep. Hmm. Okay, I got it. 48 part Mario track race. There you go. 48, 48 track Mario Kart race. Uh, winner gets first pick of them. Oh, Among the, our entire team. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I love the idea. <laughs> no, you don't. You can tell me it's a terrible idea. <laughs> But I like Mario Kart. <laughs> I mean, as long as we don't have to restream it, you you do what you want within your team. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, I, unless you have any uh, final thoughts on the seed of the tournament, I think we will go ahead and let you go. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you to everybody behind the scenes, Scala, everybody there for uh, running this as well. And thank you too as well for putting on a wonderful show for us. Hey, have, a, have a good night. Have a good night. And here I'm gonna go get a drink after that. All right. Have a good night. GG again. Yeah. Well. We did it, Glare, and we are done. We've made it to the end of the Eblin Elixir Week. Soon we hit reset and just start playing again? As much as I would love to do that, uh, some of our admin folks need a break. I do want to shout out uh, really quick, now that we are at the end of our tournament, uh, shout out to all of the people behind the scenes through the entire tournament, not just uh, Hush Pyramid on Restream and Fiery Blizzard and Beauty and Discovery on Tracking tonight, but everyone on our Restream team who has made this possible. There is still one title round async, that's right, thank Fiery Blizzard, for those for our runners participating in the title rounds, but this is the last Restream, so we have to say this now. Uh, I want to thank all of our amazing runners. Uh, we had 24 teams of four represented in this tournament, plus a couple of freelancers who uh, stepped in uh, as substitutes for some of our runners uh, as they either had to drop or had to take a week off. So I want to thank all of those people as well. I want to give a huge thank you to the rest of the admin team for all of their hard work in making sure this tournament ran smoothly. Uh, as smoothly as possible and uh, getting everything figured out and really making sure that we could try to give everyone the best experience that we could possibly give. And thank you to y'all viewing this either in Twitch chat or on YouTube. Uh, uh, it, we do this for you. We do this for you. I mean, we do this for us, but we also do this for you. And it's always a pleasure uh, to see all the uh, to interact with chat uh, during the live streams and uh, to see folks come into the Discord on YouTube. Uh, speaking of which, we do, uh, while our tournament season is over, we do have uh, some, our club season starting up soon. Uh, so our, we're going to be week bringing back our bi-weekly community races uh, and we're going to be bringing back our club restreams. Uh, details on that will be forthcoming in our Discord. Shout outs to the Discord. Uh, so stay tuned to that. Uh, but until then, I have been Xenocat, uh, joined in the booth by Guerin. Shout out to you, Guerin. Always a pleasure, Zeno. Thanks very much. It was an exciting finals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This was a great send off for this tournament. And uh, we will hope to see you very soon during our club season. Take care, everyone.